Good. Good. All right. So today we're going to talk about why math equals money and voltage drop. So the primary thing we're going to discuss is voltage drop. A lot of you guys are familiar with voltage drop. You've heard of it before. You got the little voltage drop calculators on your phone with the handy app. You know, you guys talk, heard people talk about voltage drop, like, oh, we got to size the wire up because of voltage drop. Well, well, let's examine that and break that down a little bit. So a couple of things. First thing to note is what are they referring to in the code as far as voltage drop is concerned? Some of you guys know this. Some of you guys don't know this. Um, 210.19, note number four. Branch circuits, you're allowed 3%. Service, you're allowed 2% for a total of a 5% voltage drop at the point of use. So whatever the outlet, the light fixture, the appliance, you know, the heater. This is an example that we pulled from an actual job. Whatever the case may be, you're allowed 5% voltage drop on it, total. They want you to have 3% on the branch circuit, 2% on the service, but nobody's really measuring that and checking. So 5% total is the number to keep in your head. How are we arriving at that? Now, how do we get voltage drop? A lot of you guys are familiar with the Ohm's law, you know, V equals IR. Now they're using E equals IR. I refuse to call it E. We're sticking with V. It's volts equals current times resistance. That's the general formula that's used for it. This is what we're using for our purposes. We have a single phase formula. We have a three phase formula that's going to give us our voltage drop. Single phase is pretty simple. You're going to do two times the resistance times the current times the length of the conductor divided by the circular mills. Now the resistance is computed on something called the K factor. Um, I had to actually look this up to figure out what this was. It was I just knew it was a constant. It is the direct current resistance for a conductor 1,000 foot long, uh, 1,000 circular mils at 75 degrees C. This is the constant that they're using. This is in your Uglies book. You'll see it for copper. It's 12.9. For aluminum, it's 21.2. These are the two numbers you're going to have to remember on the test. Or you just bring in your Uglies book and you just know where to find it. All right? So that's our constant right here. Over here, single phase, pretty simple. You know, current, I is current. That's how much amperage is being drawn across that conductor. You know, so could be a 20 amp branch circuit, but we're only drawing 2 amps or 4 amps or 6 amps or whatever we're drawing. We can figure that out and we're going to do that in the example. So we figure out what current we're drawing. We use the resistance with the K factor and 2. Why are we multiplying it by 2? Does anybody know? Come on, don't be afraid. What's that? Yeah, it's got to get there and back. The power always returns to the source. Always returns to the source. So remember that. Pretty straightforward. Circular mills, you guys know what circular mills are? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so it's the measurement of the diameter of a wire. So you're an American wire gauge up until 4 ot. So when they first started this whole electric thing, you know, there wasn't a need for really big wires because there wasn't really any big appliances. There was just lamps. You just had electric lighting. So everything started out as American wire gauge. And then it went, you know, it started, the bigger the gauge was, the smaller the wire was. You know, she started with like 22 gauge and 20 gauge and 18 gauge and, you know, 16 gauge, 14 gauge, 12 gauge, 10, 8, all the way down, 6 and then you start getting smaller and smaller. Then you got down to one gauge. It was like, okay, we need bigger wires. We got more electricity we're using. What do we do now? So then they started doing one odd, which was one over zero. And then two odd, two over zero, three odd, four odd. They got the four odd, and they're like, okay, we need to come up with a better system for this. So that's where they came up with circular mills. And that's why you go from four odd to 250 kcmill. And then your wire sizes increase, you know, usually by 50 mil circular mils or 500 circular mils at a time. You go from, you know, 250 to 300 to 350 to whatever. You, you follow what I'm saying? All right. So that's circular mils. I think we got that covered. Three phase. All right. Three phase is a little different. You guys notice what's different on the three phase? Square root of three. So you're not getting, 
you're not going linearly, just in a line, straight there and straight back with three phase. You get kind of that mechanical advantage. We did the analogy where you got the two guys pulling on the ropes, you get the resultant. It, it's the same kind of electrical advantage. I'm going to use that word instead of mechanical advantage to kind of, you know how you put a lever on something, you get a mechanical advantage? You're getting an electrical advantage. It's the same concept. That gets boiled down with the law of cosines. We did the class where we broke that down. You end up with the derivative just being the square root of 3. So that's the multiplier for that. All right, the rest is the same. So, okay, a lot of you guys are probably sitting here thinking, that's great, Morgan. Why do I care? Game's on. We got weed to smoke. You know, we don't give a shit about this, right? Well, I'm going to tell you why you need to give a shit about this and why this is important. Because everybody here likes money, right? Some of you might like it less than others by your actions at work, but everybody here likes money, right? So we like money. We want to keep as much of that money as possible. So, and then also there's another advantage too. If you can go through a print and pick out stuff that's wrong that the engineer did that's costing the client money, this is a bargaining chip. You're going to look smart as hell. You know, this is from the factory job, in case anybody's wondering. So I ended up coming in at 10.1 on it, but there's still a little bit of play. So what I'm going to do, if I don't hear anything from him by midweek next week, I'm going to call him up and be like, hey, I was thinking about ways to save you some more money. Looks like your engineer made a couple of mistakes that cost you money. So let's break this down. All right? So... On the print, E51, it's a paint AMU heater. Right off the bat, we know it's not a motor load. So, you know, things that you would generally have to apply to motors where you've got to size the conductors a little bit bigger if it's a continuous load and that kind of thing, not a problem here. It's just a resistive load. That's it. You've got 124,650 VAs at 480 volts three phase, and it calls out for three runs a 250, well, three 250 KC mill aluminum XHHWs. Now, I was looking at this, and immediately alarm bells kind of started going off in my head. Now, with you guys, you guys are doing a lot more field work and a lot less math, so you're probably not going to immediately catch it. But it's always good to check these things, especially your long feeder lengths, when you're doing a factory job. You know, some of you guys are in management here. This is kind of a management level problem that we're applying to a class, but it's good for everybody to understand why we're doing this. So you guys are familiar with this formula that we use all the time, right? This is your current is equal to the KVA divided by the square root of three times the voltage line to line. So we're using this to derive the amount of current we're pushing out of transformers, sizing conductors, all kinds of things. You guys have seen it on a practice test. Everybody knows what this formula is about. Pretty much, yeah, seeing some not, no, that's okay. Basically, all right, let me break it down. It's current, which is I, is equal to KVA, so 1,000 VA. So usually you got measurements in KVA. They gave us this already broken out, so you don't have to do that multiplication, but VA is divided by the square root of 3 times the voltage line to line. Voltage line to line is 480 volts. Square root of 3 is 3 phase. That's our multiplier. KVA, we got the VAs already multi multiplied out, broken out, 124,650. So we're going to plug those numbers in to figure out how much current is actually being drawn by this machine. All right? Everybody picking that up? So we do the math on it. We got 149.9 amps. Is there anything jumping out on anybody who's got a little more experience now? Go ahead, yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, but, now, did you just know that it's above boron? You were just like, wait a second, let me double check. So I looked at this number, right? And, and I, I kind of put that through in my head, and I'm like, oh, because you're not going to start out like that, but when you do enough of these, and you look at enough blueprints, you're going to start seeing stuff. You're going to do some math, and you're be like, wait a minute, that doesn't look right. You know, it's just like if you've been doing rigging your entire life, you know, and you look at the rope, and you're like, that rope is probably way too big. We probably could use a smaller rope to hoist this because you just know. Here, buddy. 
Don't let me step on you, all right? So, anyways, I lost my train of thought there. That's No, you're, you're good. So, you just know. You're looking at this. You're like, okay, that looks wrong. So, you double check it. You, you know how to do math. We know how to do math here, and we're going to check it out. 150 amps. Now, you got this table, 310.60. Is anybody familiar with this table? You know, it's the amount of current that can be um, put across no more than three current carrying conductors in a raceway because this is going to be in a raceway of some sort or a cable or whatever, right? So you go there and you look up your impacities and you see what do you got. Well, 3 aught can do 155 amps, 4 aught can do 180, and 250 case email can do 205 amps. So the minimum right here is 3 aught, right? And what they're calling out is 250. Now it's, it should look more apparent to everybody that, okay, this is probably oversized. But we got to account for voltage drop. All right, so let's account for voltage drop. Let's actually put this through the formula and see what happens. So we got, of course, the marker I grabbed doesn't work. Voltage drop is going to be equal to square root of 3 times the resistance, 21.2, times current. We figured that out. That's 150 times the length. Length, we got 528 divided by circular mills. What do we got for circular mills for, let's do... First, let's do 250. 250, anybody know off the top of their head? 250,000, yeah. It's easy. That's why it's, it's in circular mills already. 250. All right, who's my calculator jockey? You got him? You want to do it? All right. Square root of three, you could just substitute 1.732 because we we don't have to be, we're not trying to hit the moon or anything, you know, land on the moon or something. This is, this is just kind of a general calculation to show you guys what's up. Jeremy, if you fail that test, you're doing 200 push-ups. Huh? You're confident? All right. What's that? We'll just break it out. So let's just break it out on the calculator. Simple multiplication, right? So take 1.732, multiply it by 21.2. Hold on a second. Okay, 36.7. Multiply that by 150. Uh, yep. Multi uh, then multiply that by 528. Oh, that sounds right. Yeah, divide it by 250,000. I was doing all this. Oh, okay, so VD equals 11.63. So you're only losing 11 and a half volts here, right? Okay, so let's see if that falls in line with our expectations over here, right? So go 11.63, divide it by 480. What do we get? Divided right by 480. 480, yep. 0 0.024. Okay. Equals 0 0.024. Multiply that by 100. Okay, 2.42. Yep. 2.42%. It's a lot less than 5. So, yes, we know it's good, but is it oversized? So let's go to the next one, right? Let's see what the minimum is going to give us. Minimum is 3 aught, right? So we're going to plug this whole thing in again. We're going to go VD, not the kind you get in Tijuana, divided by 3 times 
21.2 times 150 times 528 divided by, let's see, right here, circular mills, 3 out, 167,800. 167,800. All right, let's plug that in and let's figure out what we got there. 1.732 times 21.2 times 150 times 528. One six seven eight hundred. Seventeen point three three. Yeah. Okay. Pd equals seventeen point three three. All right. Divide that by four eighty. Point zero six. Point zero three six times a hundred. Three point six one percent. It's less than five. Now, I mean, this comes a judgment call. I like, what are you trying to do here? You know, these are recommendations. Total is supposed to be under five percent. If you don't have any service, if you don't have any voltage drop at the panel that you're pulling this off of, you want to size it in these feeders. 3.61 is less than 5. Let's go middle of the road and see what 4 ot gives us. Middle of the road, 4 ot. That's going to be, you're going to divide that number by uh, 211,600. 211,600. So we'll do the same thing. You're good. Voltage drop equals square root of 3 times 21.2 times 150 times 528. Divided by two one one six hundred. Uh, thirteen point seven four. All right, thirteen point seven four. Divide that by four eighty. Okay, uh, Yep. Oh, look at that. What's the number right here? Three. 2.86, last time I checked, it's less than three. So we're a full size up larger on the call out than is required by code. Maybe even two, if you want to really push the limits. Well, what's that translate? Why, why do we care about this shit? Like, oh, what's that? Save us money. Yeah, this is the whole reason why we're sitting in a freezing cold warehouse right now. Yes, I go think ahead. It's more important. I mean, it's, it can make or break a deal, too. Absolutely. Because I mean, you're holding it in your back pocket. I mean, you just need to support for a bit. In. Yep. So I did know this before we put the whole number together or whatever. I had to think professionally estimated. So a little segue into the whole factory. I know everybody's got that on their minds. So I had it professionally estimated by two different companies, and I did it myself. So I, one company came in at 10.7, another came in at 9.7. I went middle of the road at 10.1. And that's what I came up with, doing my own method. Um, is there a little wiggle room in there? Yeah. I want to keep this margin as big as possible because obviously there's not a whole lot of us here right now. And it's going to require doubling, maybe even tripling the size of the company to actually pull this off. I mean, I'm not even worried about the $3 million job that David and I are going to go look at. You know, the only thing I'm a little nervous about is doing the $3 million job and the $10 million job at the same time. That's going to be bonkers. Yes? How much money are you saving? Oh, yeah, let's get back to the case in point, right? So, I looked up some prices. 3 ot is $1.21 a foot. Uh, 250 kc mil is $1.63 a foot. So, 
four of them at 163. I do 550 feet here. Why is this more than what it's scaled to? Because you're going to have some waste at either end. So I said on a 528 foot run, we're probably going to pull an extra 22 feet. It's going to get wasted from people terminating. You got to go up and into the disconnect and whatnot. Yeah, I think 22 feet is pretty reasonable. So 550 comes to 3,586 for what's called out. If we go down to the bare minimum viable, $1.21 times 4 times 550 is $26.62. A savings of $924 on one feeder. It's important to remember. It's like, oh, okay, you know, $924 does not sound like a big deal on a $10 million job. It's like that's a that's a rounding error. But if you do this a thousand times, that translates into big money. You know, so I think if I go through this whole thing and pick this print apart, there's probably going to be $150,000 to $250,000 in just material savings alone on it. So when you're doing these bids, you're in the office, you're putting these numbers together, you're going through this stuff, you're looking at the print. Number one, check the engineer's work. You know, I don't have to tell... Jared here, Jared knows how bad the engineers are from the O'Reilly's job. I mean, how ridiculous is that? They're giving us the wrong blueprint. The measurements are wrong on the blueprint. I mean, you guys don't know the whole story, but it's a disaster over there. They, they literally have, they gave us the wrong blueprint, and the lights are hung at the wrong fucking heights. All of them. Yeah. Not our fault. I verify, so I verify every time we do one of these jobs. What do I tell you guys when you get on the site? Get the latest revision of the print from the project manager and make him email it to you. So that way it's like, yes, we are installing this based on, and then there's two reasons. Number one, see if they slip any revisions in us in on us that we're not on the quote because they're trying to get over. Like, oh, yeah, well, we, they added, there's five outlets on this print. There's, you know, no outlets on this one. It's just extra stuff that they want you to do for free. That's the first reason. The second reason is to make sure everybody's playing off the same script. You know, so of course, they fucking are playing off the wrong script. They issued the lighting print at the end of October, the one that they wanted. Lights were already hung. They're already hung. So, yeah, we're going to get paid to move it, but it's just stupidity. It's just an epic amount of stupidity that, you know, I don't want to move the lights. I, Jared, I know Jared doesn't want to be there anymore at all. He's probably over that job. You know, same thing with calculations. You know, most of these guys that are doing engineering stuff aren't necessarily all that bright. Their mother wanted them to go to school. You know, their parents encouraged them to go to school. They managed to somehow get through their classes by taking Adderall or whatever it was they were doing, you know. And they got a degree, and somebody hired them, and now they sit in front of a computer and point and click all day and rely on software. Yes, go ahead. Their numbers? Yeah, they're relying on. Software? Yeah, they're relying on software. So what this is probably doing, it's probably, and then this, you're only as good as the software's programmed to be, you know. So if the software's programmed by somebody who's not really familiar with these rules. You know, you'll see on some jobs, they'll say anything over 75 feet, you got to size it up for like 12 gauge. It's like, why? Why isn't it based on the load that's actually applied to it? And it's because somebody made an arbitrary decision when they were making this software or whatever, and then it got put in there, and everybody's just leaning on that, and nobody actually understands the theory behind it or is, cares to apply it. They might understand it, but everyone's too lazy to actually apply it. So when you start looking at these prints, understand that when you're dealing with a big installation, this is going to translate to a lot of cost savings. You know, this isn't going to be a, oh, okay, you know, you're going to save 50 bucks or something. You know, who cares? You know, this is going to translate to tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars that's going to go right in your pocket, or you're going to get the job. Because you're going to be able to say, hey, 
look, customer, your engineer did this wrong. It's going to cost you more money to do it per print. Why don't we just do it per NEC? And I can give you some savings, and it gives you an edge on your competition. So it's something to think about. I mean, either way, it, it's going to cut favorably for you. Say everybody's bit, and then you got to remember too, these other electrical companies, most guys are not hip to this. Most guys that are sitting in the office pointing and clicking on estimating software, they are not checking this type of stuff. Now, there is some estimating software that will check feeder sizes for you. One of them is called Conest, but most guys are not using that estimating software. They're using something like Bluebeam or Ground Plan or something that's very generic, boilerplate, and it doesn't have any of this NEC code stuff built into it. Yeah. Like performance on a job, they don't really care if they save money. They, that, they don't go ahead and install it. Yep. And just put it down the so it's definitely a good insight for me. Yeah, it's an eye opener. It's a great segue. I'm glad you actually brought that up because I'm going to use an example. Who here has been to Ross? You guys remember how every single circuit in there is pulled in A gauge? Why? Why is it pulled in A gauge? Because the union guys saw it on a print. Some engineer didn't apply this formula. They just boilerplate, yup, well, it's over, you know, 150 foot run. It's got to be 8 gauge. Why? Doesn't it be? So you don't, if you have one outlet on the other side of the store that's 180 VAs, it's just a convenience plug. There's nothing crazy going on there. Why does it need to have 8 gauge ran to it? There's no reason. You know, you do the math, figure out what the voltage drop is actually going to be, and size the wire accordingly. Now, does that make sense to do on one branch circuit? Maybe not. Maybe you just kind of apply a generic template like, yeah, all right, that looks right. Oh, it's a big store. We probably size it up to 10 gauge or whatever, right? If you're doing hundreds of runs, this is going to translate into not only more money for the wire, what about the pipe? Think about it. You're going, to be, you're going to be using the same size raceways. You're going to fit less circuits in them. You're going to have to build more raceways. What eats the most time here? Building raceways. He's just entertaining himself he over there. <laughs> yeah. Can you put my markers back? Or at least some of them? Yeah. Easiest way. Never it's about the dollar. No. Never. And that's why I'm trying to train you guys to make it about the dollar. The goal is to turn this into a franchise and get you guys broken out with your own individual companies earning. You know, and I want everybody thinking about it. And then anybody who's in a project management position is already getting a bonus check anyways based on profitability. So I try and highly incentivize this whole structure so you guys are thinking about the money the entire time. I mean, none of us got out of bed this morning because we're super passionate about electrical work and we're just jerking off to conduit and that kind of shit when we get home. You know, I mean, at least I don't think so. Maybe some of you guys are, but that's not, that's not me. I, I'm passionate about the money. That's what gets me going. So that's what I kind of wanted to break down for you guys. So just a quick recap, you know, was looking at the print, saw that, this call out for 250 KC mil was excessive. Did some math, figured out it's drawn 149 amps, pulled the table up. Oh, okay. What can we actually, uh, yeah, I'm not taking that. We're not doing that until after class is done. What can we actually support with this? All right, three out would be the minimum, four outs in between, and 250 KC mil is what's called for. Did some more math, figured out, all right. You know, if we use the minimum, you're going to have 3.61% voltage drop. You know, it's a little bit over what's recommended, but it's under that number of five. That's kind of a judgment call you can make. You know, if you go to a size down, though, you're at 2.86. So you could even size this thing 
on full rot and you're still going to save a couple hundred bucks. Matter of fact, does somebody want to go and pull up the cost per foot for full rot so we can just run this exercise real quick? Yeah, just wire and cable your way is a website that will have prices on it. It's probably a dollar forty-three or something like that. Dollar thirty-two. Look at that. All right, times four, times five fifty. Somebody get me over to finish line. How many minutes does he have left? Two thousand nine hundred four. Okay. Two thousand nine hundred. And four. All right, I want you to take 3586, subtract 2904. $682. All right, so even being within this 3% tolerance, sizing it correctly, we are saving $682. Now multiply that by 50. That's a pretty significant amount of money. Would you guys rather have that in your pockets, in your bonus checks? You know, sounds a lot better that way. I like money. I'll take that 34 grand. That's just one feeder. There is thousands of feeders in this job. There's literally thousands. I have to go back through and calculate all this shit. I'm only going to do it on the really big stuff. I'm not going to do it on the, the 10 gauge and the little branch circuit wiring, but I, I have a feeling that I'm going to be able to shave maybe half a million, 300,000 in just materials on this. No, because we don't ever get to choose that. So it's always the blueprint is drafted up by somebody else. The engineer does the math. Then they post the job. Now, it's not like one specific like, uh, business or firm that's actually like pretty tough. Silverstein Architects is pretty good. They're a local company in the area. I mean, there's guys that are better. But again, it's really kind of a grab bag because there's just a shortage of everybody that knows how to do shit now for some reason. You know, and this is across all fields in construction, including architecture and engineering. There's just a just a giant vacuum of guys that know what they're doing, you know, which is why like I push this whole education thing so much. I think we could break for questions. Has anybody got any questions on this whole voltage drop thing? Pretty good. You guys understand the concept, you know, kind of how we're doing it and whatnot. All right, I think I'm gonna wrap it up, David. I mean, I think if this is kind of all I really wanted to cover, anyways.